Let's do this. We have to ask what happened and how. People who are quick to know it all will tell you about a fat, lighter house burning fast. But as the videos have indicated, at two stories plus an attic, This didn't exactly burn fast. In fact, uh, it burned rather slowly. We've seen multiple videos shot from what we saw to be the entrance to the source of the fire and the primary source of the heat. We've also seen what had been the opening or the opening to what had been a carport. After dialing 911, we took the time to remove vehicles from this carport and the mantle, which once was here, was cleared. Why? What led to this? Sometimes HVAC systems go down. Sometimes people decide to have fires. And here we had a fire. I keep wanting to tell you how many days ago it was. 27. Tomorrow makes 28 days. So how does all this happen? I had a fire here. I had a fire here in a chimney that, though difficult to completely see, we can see some of what had been the footing of the house and that it was a, a chimney on the exterior of the home. It's a chimney onto which we had just put brand new chimney caps with spark arresters. It's a fire that was in its second round of wood. A modest coal bed had been built with the idea that it could serve as a radiating source of heat with a bit of thermal mass. I did what I thought I should do. I checked the flu. And I checked the flu and I made sure I had good airflow. Somewhere along the way, we noticed while sitting Right about here, where a sofa once was, below where this tub fell, we noticed a spark fall down. We immediately came to the fire. I immediately looked up, looked up, metal dome, metal dome, saw daylight. In this case, not daylight, but a little bit of orange. Let us please know and note that due to the massive amount of heat, this gap has expanded some. And I will say some. Nonetheless, there was a gap. There was a gap. And in spite of my best efforts to be vigilant, 
Although we had had a fire a few nights earlier, this fire had more heat. And where my hand now rests were multiple inches of wooden mantle. So what I saw when I had looked up from here was a small, small bit of orange. Some wood had contact, not sure why. Everyone who's ever used this fireplace knows that it's been used uh, with maximum heat. This does not excuse the fact that on this day, there was some conduction of heat. And then with a bit of air to come through, we had some convection. But we were here, right here, attending this fire. And the moment we saw a spark fall from what had been a bit of fire here, we brought in pots of water and extinguished this fire. We brought in a fire extinguisher and I attempted to spray it into the gap. This was not adequate. I immediately ran outside. This meant coming through the den right into a a foyer, a general open area where the stairwell was, and then turning right and going down these steps. And right here was a spigot. Not a spigot connected to galvanized plumbing with inadequate water, a spigot with two-year-old pecs. I brought the hose in and I extinguished this fire. I used the hose and I sprayed upward. And I extinguished all flame. I then ran upstairs to about right here. There was a bedroom with a bed and a bed and floor trim. I scooted the beds out of the way. I pulled back the floor trim. I looked down and I could see orange down below. Critical mistake number one. I will never live it down. I know this house like no one else. This is one third of a spoke and each attic is narrowly interconnected with modest airflow. At this moment, I needed to have taken my hose I needed to have gone up the steps. And then from right here, begun to reduce the intensity of the source of heat, which continued to sustain a fire that expanded. Had I squirted the hose down from here, this fire would not have spread. I had enough time to then proceed through a doorway into what had been the dual bedrooms. I pulled down the ladder to the attic. I went up into the attic. I crossed into this attic space and I was able to observe that from the attic, no flame. But at this moment, I was letting precious time go. I needed another set of hands on the hose. 911 was on the way. My spouse was gathering cats. I'm going to believe that around here, I encountered her at this doorway into what had been the room where two cats lived. And we were trying to cram two of our other cats into a cat carrier. Again, 911 had been called. We were proceeding casually and with as much calmness as possible. We came downstairs. 
I think I tried to assure her that things were subdued and she noticed that there was flame coming from behind the paneling. This notice happened somewhere in the timeline. I went back to my hose and began squirting it. Now this flame, which had, 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 had air, had heat, had started to spread here, I had subdued it. Here is my other mistake. The fire department was called, so I knew that things were going to be okay. Somewhere in the process, when they arrived, I'm not sure why, but they didn't come through here. Two people we've seen at 715 came through this doorway and they didn't have foam or water and they didn't take my hose. They used a device and they checked the temperature right here where I had had a hose until X number of minutes before. Meanwhile, the other firefighters on the scene were working on trying to bring the pump truck around the back side of the house. I said there was a septic tank and to hug the bushes. I said there was a septic tank closer to that palm and to hug the bushes. Trucks with less girth have made that pass. For some reason, this may have slowed them down. And for some reason, they were choosing to fight the fire from outside. They were trying to come around the back side of the house and fight it from the outside. They were here and I was here. I then proceeded to the house and I cut off the air conditioning here. I cut off the air conditioning here. I know that when I move the car from here, I went over to the breakers and I cut them. At this point, the firefighters were here and I was doing my best to create a safe environment for them to save the house. I had the opportunity to cut the circuit breakers to the HVAC unit that was up there and we now see here. I should have taken the hose upstairs and squirted it down when I saw orange. I should have taken the hose downstairs and squirted it when I saw orange. I don't believe firefighters carry cameras and they probably shouldn't but they're because they're too busy. But someone would have heard me say, I can see flame from the second floor. I went back up into the attic and somewhere in all of this, I saw that there was now flame in the attic. I let the firefighters know this. It's all blurry, but I know I moved towards what was the kitchen door. And just before the kitchen door in the dining room, two Liberty County deputies encountered me. These are the body cam, this is the body cam footage that I need. There are two cat carriers on this side of the dining room door or the kitchen door separating the dining room and the kitchen. They were in such a hurry to rush me out of the door under threat of arrest that I had to calmly say, fellas, can you please help me pick up these cat carriers? This became an argument, but I or they or someone picked up the cat carriers, at which point we opened the kitchen door. And upon seeing my spouse, who had been responsibly staging the cat carriers and was trying to get the one last cat under this kitchen table, Corporal Henning, upon seeing her, physically assaulted her in a way that made me think either he hates women or he knows my spouse and he hates her. 
perhaps from three days earlier when we visited on the side of the road on Dorchester Village Road and he was having to obstruct traffic because we wouldn't allow filming of The Walking Dead to take place in front of our property. Maybe he had a grudge, I don't know. But he shoved my spouse, at which point she yelled back that I am trying to get a cat, at which point he threatened to arrest her and maybe she yelled back and then after putting her arm behind her back, Corporal Henning shoved my spouse out this porch. That's how she left her house. Under threat of arrest, I was made to leave. I should have fought. I should have fought. Had I fought, had the fire chief not issued whatever command was issued to throw us out of this home, I would have returned to this hose and I then would have moved to the second floor and I would have squirted down to subdue this heat source. I then would have moved up to the entrance of this attic and it would have been a frightful scene, but I would have covered it with water. I would have covered it with foam and I would have covered it with water and I would have covered it with foam. And we already had three friends on the way and they would have brought in another hose. And had there been some coordination with myself and the fire department, they wouldn't have spent who knows how much time positioning a truck over here, running hose lines around here, and fighting the fire from here. So here, let's exit the home. Do you see the chimney? I understand all the mistakes I have made. I do. I see the lessons learned. But I also know that I had a fire contained when I left my hose. Now I'm outside of the house. This is the chimney. No worse for wear. This is the stairwell I came out of. The spigot was here. I had the fire subdued. I should have gone to the second floor and further subdued it. I could have had there been cooperation between Liberty County deputies, EMS and firefighters led us into what could have been the way to contain this fire and keep the property from becoming a total loss. I was here. I walked away from my hose. And then the deputies threw me out of my house when I could have returned to this hose. And God and the angels only know what may have happened. But I know with conviction that water applied to a fire before it has gained enough thermal mass and has gotten access to enough flammable material at a combustible point is containable. And I had un I had maybe 45 gallons per minute of water and I had fire extinguishers. And for a brief moment, I had six firefighters, a clear driveway, a cleared mantle, and a straight shot. I'm telling you a straight shot right into the house to put a hose on this or to take my hose and to continue to reduce the thermal mass of the heat source and attack it from the outside. But the decision not to reduce the intensity of the heat source in spite of my declaration to do so, the decision to throw me out of my house and my spouse out of her home are the reasons why I was not able to do my part
to lead the fight in this fire. Who was responsible for this? You got an answer? <laughs>